Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be working on basic electrical wiring. If you want to install a smart switch or you've ever wanted to change your regular switch or a dimmer switch or if you wanted to install a GFI outlet in your kitchen or a regular change your outlets or install a smart outlet or a USB outlet, stay tuned to this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Dean and It Yourself. First of all, let me start out by saying that I'm not a licensed electrician, but I have accumulated electrical knowledge over the years. And if you are not sure about what you're doing, then please consult a licensed electrician for help. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let me first start by going over some common terms that we're gonna be using when talking about electrical wiring. These are line, hot, load, neutral, and ground. These are the terms that you guys are going to need to be familiar with when you're working with electrical wiring. I'm gonna be using a switch for reference, but whether you have a switch or an outlet, the first thing you wanna do is remove the cover plate. You can see here, these are held in place by two screws. You're gonna to wanna to remove your cover plate, and then you're gonna to wanna to remove the actual switch. Usually it's held in place by screws here and here. You're gonna remove it. Once you remove it, there'll be wires connected all to the back here, but we'll go over that in a second. And you're going to have cables in the back of your box. All right, don't panic. I know that it seems like a lot of cables, but I'm going to show you what all the cables do and what wire does what. All right, now that we have our box, the next thing we're going to do is we want to find our cables. The first wire that we need to locate is called the line wire. This is usually black in color. Um, and line or hot, sometimes you'll hear it referred to as hot, is the term used for the power cable. Here in the US, that's 120 volts, but in your country, the voltage may vary. Either way, this wire here is the most important wire you need to be aware of, because this one carries all the power. The load is usually represented by a red wire. The red wire or the load is usually the device that is getting powered. So this wire would typically go to either um, a light bulb or a fan or any other device that you're trying to control. The neutral wire is the second part of the power cable that returns any excess voltage back to the panel. In most cases, the voltage in the neutral cable will be zero volts. And usually the neutral is represented by a white wire. All right? The next wire is the ground and the ground wire is usually typically either copper like this or in some cases it may be um, green. But the ground refers to the cable that protects the circuit from any surges is in electricity. In most cases again the voltage in this wire is going to be zero as well. Okay so now let's talk about switches. Whether you guys are installing a smart switch like this one, or you want to install a dimmer switch like this that dims your lights up and down, or you want to just install or upgrade your existing light switch, then they're all function the same. Switches are simple. The way it works is, just imagine, power comes into your light switch from your panel, and then the switch sends the power to whatever device you're trying to control. So when you turn it on, it sends the power to your light switch or whatever device. Whenever you turn it off, it turns the power off. So whenever you're wiring any light switch, you want to find four things. You want to identify the hot wire, which is carrying the power, the ground wire, the neutral wire, and we need to identify the load the device that is being controlled, all right? And the way you identify them is with a multimeter or a circuit tester. In order to identify these devices, you can either use a circuit tester like this or a digital multimeter like this. Once you've identified, once you've identified which wire is which one, then you can turn the power off and begin the replacement of your switches. 
I know some of you guys don't know how to use these testers, but these circuit testers are pretty easy. What you would do is you would touch it to each wire and it would beep if it has voltage in it. So in the case of a switch, you would look for your white wire and if you touch it to it, it should have zero. So you know that's your neutral. Your copper wire is always your ground wire and you need to look for your black wires and your red wires. If you touch it to your black wire and it has power and you turn off the switch and it still has power, then that is your hot wire or your power wire coming in. If you touch it to your red wire and turn the switch off and it doesn't beep, that means there's no voltage. You turn it back on, it beeps, that means there's voltage, which means that's your load wire going to your device. All right, so now that you've identified that using this, you can also use your multimeter. The way the multimeter works is if you take, you're gonna have two leads here. One is your black lead, one is your red lead. You can touch the black lead to any grounding device in your box, either a screw on the box, or if you flip the switch over and you see the grounding screw, or the copper wire, you just hold this on the copper wire. And then you touch the red wire, the red lead to either prongs or other wires in the circuit. If you touch it to the white wire and you get zero volts, you know that that's your neutral. If you touch it to the black wire and you get 120 volts, then that's your power wire. Then you turn the switch off. If you still get 120 volts, then that's your power wire or your hot wire and then you touch it to the red wire or if there's another black wire in the box, you touch it to that wire and turn the switch on and off. And if the power goes between zero and 120 volts, then that's your load wire. And that's the way you identify using a multimeter. So as I said before, all the switches have the same four wires that you're going to look for. Okay, let's take a look at a smart switch first. As you can see here, we have four wires, like I said. The green one is your ground, the white one is your neutral, and in this case, any one of these can be either your hot wire or your load wire. So, what we would do is, inside of our box, we would look to find all the corresponding wires. We would take the ground wire, like you see here, coming from inside the box, and we would connect it to the grounding wire here using wire nuts. Then we would connect the white wire here on the switch to the white wire here in our box. Then we would connect the black wire here on our switch to the black wire here and the load wire which would be going to our light, our light bulb which would be the red wire here to the other, to the load terminal here. And that's how you'd wire a smart switch. The same token, you would have a dimmer switch. And the dimmer switch works the same way. Again, in this case, we have a green wire which would go to our ground here. We would have, we have a black wire. Either one of these wires can be connected to the hot and to the load. So we would connect one to our black wire and one to our red wire. And the white wire that's left, which is the neutral, would just be connected to the other white wires that are inside your box. So if you see a box, if you, so if when you open your box, you see a bunch of white wires connected together, don't panic, just connect the other white wire to that bunch of white wires as well. And that takes care of your dimmer switch. Now, if you have a, regular light switch then you would do the same thing again you look for your ground and on here the grounding screw is located right here so we would connect our ground to this screw here our hot to this screw here and our load which would be the red wire to the other screw here and again the white wire we would just connect them to all the other white wires in the box if you notice on some of these, um, if you notice on some of these switches, you have holes located here and here. That's to make the installation simple. In some cases, you would just take a pair of wire strippers, 
strip the wire and you would loosen these screws here and here and you could just push and then you just push the wires in and tighten the screws if it doesn't have holes usually you have to bend it around the screws here and all you do if it doesn't have screws sometimes you have to bend the wire and form it in a little hook like this and then you hook it you unscrew the screw hook it around the screw and tighten the screw okay now let's take a look at outlets it doesn't matter if it's a smart outlet if it's a GFI outlet for your kitchen or if it's a standard electrical outlet again just like switches they're all wired the same however unlike switches outlets only require three connections they only require the hot the neutral and the ground why because the outlet doesn't have a device that it needs to control the outlet is the device so just like the switches we need to locate the hot the ground and the neutral wire and for outlets it should be pretty simple I'll show you guys a trick how it works with outlets usually if you see an electrical outlet you always notice that you have one side that's small one side that's larger and one size here for a circular insert the way it works is this side is the smaller side is typically your hot side which is where the power is that side is your neutral side and that side is your ground so so if you look at an outlet and you remove it from the wall and you flip it over the side that's connected on this side is typically your hot side and usually the screws on that side are usually copper color or black the other side is your neutral side and if you see here the screws are typically silver which is for your white wire and then usually down at the bottom you have a grounding screw here so usually outlets are pretty easy to um, identify what wire goes where once you remove them however if you're not sure you can still test it with a circuit tester again once you remove the once you remove the outlet from your box if you have your box here and you remove it and you want to put in a new one you would put the grounding screw the grounding cable would be attached to this screw here and you would just tighten it the white wire would go to here on the any one of these screws and you would just tighten it and the black wire would go on any one of these screws here and then you would just tighten it in this case it doesn't have any push pins for it to any push holes for it to go in the back so you actually have to tighten it around the screws here but that takes care of your standard outlet now a USB outlet or any other smart outlet is the same thing we want to find the hot the ground and the neutral and that's it so like I said if you look at it if you look at the outlet here you can see this pin is usually you can see this screw is silver which means it tells me that this should be our uh, neutral side and if you flip it over look this side is bigger which is our neutral side on the opposite side here we have a copper color which is going to tell me that our hot should be connected here this is smaller and we should have a grounding screw here we go our grounding screw is somewhere down here okay this one has push pins where you can slide it in it doesn't matter which hole it goes into as long as you connect the neutral on this side which is the white wire and the hot wire on this side and if you notice here they made it a lot simpler and a lot easier by labeling it it tells you here on this side it says hot and on this side it says white you may also notice that a lot of these switches come with this um, measurement here that's for the wire so you know how much wire to strip away so that it will fit tightly and snug down into the holes you also have the ability to loosen these uh, screws and just wrap the wire around it or slide it behind the plate and tighten the wire if you want but either way 
that's how you wire a USB um, outlet. A GFI outlet. This is for your kitchen or anywhere you have water. Um, it has a breaker built into it so that if there's a surge in electricity or the amp incre amperage increases, then this is a protection for your circuit. Again, what do we identify when we're changing switches? We want to find the hot, the ground, and the neutral. And again, the hot should be on this side and the neutral should be on this side. So let's take a look. As you can see, the screw here is copper colored for hot and the screw on this side is silver for neutral. Again, you have holes that you can push the wires in and once you have those connected, then your switch is, I mean, once you have those connected, then your outlet is done. If you notice here on the top, you have um, more connectors and it's usually taped off. What this is, is in the event that you're wiring multiple switches together, then you would connect your, connect your hot here, connect your neutral here, and then you would connect a wire from here to your other outlet. And that connection leaving would become the hot wire. And you would take that hot and put it into here on your, on your second outlet and here would be the neutral on the second outlet. So, but for all intents and purposes, we just want to find the neutral, the hot, and the ground, and have those connected, and we're done. And that sums up how we want to install any switch and the wiring for any switch. Okay, so now we want to recap. For switches, we look for four connections once we remove the switch and we have the cables exposed. We look for our line, our neutral, our ground, and our load cable. Then we find the corresponding cables on our switch and connect them to the corresponding cables in our box. For our outlets, once we remove the outlet or we have the box, we want to locate the hot, the neutral, and the ground. Once we found those uh, cables, we're going to connect them to the corresponding terminals on our switch. And remember the trick that we used, the short side, the terminals on that side are usually hot. The bigger side, the terminals on that side are usually the neutral and the ground is usually located on the bottom or on the top of our switch. All right, guys. With that knowledge, you guys should be able to wire any electrical outlet or switch um, that you come across. Stay tuned to some of my videos where I'll be actually installing some of these switches in my house or some of these outlets in my house so you guys can follow along if you guys are still nervous about installing one of these in your home. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the channel and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. I hope you guys found this video informative and if you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching so much and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.